Hello and thanks for joining me. A couple of weeks ago you might remember we did some figures and I said I would come back and have a more in-depth look at skin tones for beginners in watercolour. If you missed that video I'll put the link to that one up here but today we're just going to talk about basic colour mixing for skin tones. So really um, I did talk about colour in previous videos and saying it's very subjective and I do firmly believe that you should get to know your own colours and experiment yourself, make up little colour charts, see what works for you and what you like. So these are just my ideas to give you a guide to start you off but really you need to get, to get to know your own colours. So get a, a notebook or sketchbook and make notes. Try, try out different colour mixes and make notes to see what works and what doesn't work. Okay, so to begin with, a very basic one, um, I'll just pop this out of the way, is to set off with, we'll, work, we'll start with some paler ones to begin with. So of course as beginners don't forget that when you want a paler colour you're using the white of your paper to shine through because they're transparent. So plenty of water and not too much colour for a pale mix and I'm just setting off with a yellow ochre and a tiny tiny touch of permanent alizarin crimson so if you, the camera can see this this one is a permanent alizarin crimson this is an ordinary alizarin so look at the difference in the colour there that's what I would call a bright red this is what we'll call a rose red so if you've not got these colours the same as I have look at what you've got and go for a rosy um, not too brilliant red something like that and I'm just putting a tiny touch of that in so much less red than I have of the yellow and then just test it out on your paper so that'll look very pale to you and then obviously you need to look back at the skin and think well does it need to be more yellow or does it need to be more pink and then you can adjust it accordingly but stick to those two colours so I'll just pop a bit more yellow in it now and you can see we've made quite a different tone colour there just by adding that little bit extra. Now if we just go back and pop a bit more pink in, red and don't forget these are going to dry lighter than they're going on. So there we've already got three quite different colours I'm hoping the camera picks these up and you'll see as they dry how different they look um, but just using two colours, so yellow ochre and a permanent alizarin crimson. So that's just one very basic to begin with. Now if you have a look at your skin, there's so many colours in there. Look at the back of my hand compared to the front of my hand. Um, we've obviously got all these greens and blues as well from your veins, but the variety of colour just in one person, when you look, it's perhaps more pink where your joints and things are, um, and less pink where they're not, much paler under the nail there and obviously much much paler on the palm of the hand to the back of the hand. So it's all again about carefully observing and looking um, to see what colours are there. So to go slightly darker now, stick to your earth colours. Um, so we could try a sienna So this is a burnt sienna. I'll just show you what that looks like on its own with nothing in, so that could be used, but it's a not very natural looking. But again, there will be some of those tones in there. If you look at my hand, there are some in there. Um, so maybe just to make it a little bit more natural, you might put a tiny, tiny bit of blue in, but only a tiny amount. Can you see how that's made it slightly less red looking okay so so when you're doing this get a nice big piece of paper and write next to them the colors that you've used because like I say you might not be using the same colors as me but just you know see what you've got and give them a try so we'll go on to a raw umber and again we'll just try it on its own but with all these you'll see I'm using plenty of water and letting the, the white of the paper come through so that's just raw umber on its own which could be useful and again we'll put a tiny touch of blue in 
and I'm, when I say tiny I do mean a tiny tiny amount I've actually put too much in let's put a bit more water in there and that just helps it make it a, a little bit darker I'm hoping the cameras I'm not going off camera with these we can see already just those few colours how many differences we've got there and then the burnt umber so I'll use the burnt umber on its own to begin with and then maybe want to make it a little bit darker again put some of the blue in and obviously if you want to be very dark then add more pigment and less water so that the paper isn't shining through the same and again make notes as you go along as to which colours you're using so those are some basic skin colours but we've got to think as again about getting some shadows in and some variety in um, so if you're doing, we'll go back to that first mix with plenty of water, plenty of the yellow and just a little touch of the red actually I've got that quite pinky but it doesn't matter now just imagine you do a whole face you could start off by covering the whole face in that one colour and then just to get a little bit of variety in there this is if for a very basic one when you're beginning just add a tiny little extra bit of pink and then if you imagine where the cheeks are or where the lips are just add that pink and then you've got so you've got the same two colours in different strengths with a little bit more pink to just pop it um, I can't I'm not show you my face at the minute but if you look at your own face see where it's the pinkest uh, usually on the tip of your nose on your cheeks your lips you might just in certain places want to add a touch of pink to it so what I would do for shadow now you can either do your shadow first or you could do it afterwards I quite often do it first and I make a weak solution of something like a cobalt blue with plenty of water in And I'll put my shadows where I think they're going to be. So maybe so under the eye, maybe. I'm going to have to leave this to dry for a little while before I come back. So perhaps there's some shadow under the eye. There may be a shadow down one side of the face, depending on where the light's coming from. Under the nose, obviously. Under the um, on the neck, underneath where the chin's casting a shadow. So just look at the subject in front of you and look at where the shadows are. Put those in and then leave them to dry and then come back later and put your, your colours on top of that so your pinks and things on top so I will let this dry and do that for you in a minute whilst I'm doing that I just wanted to show you this book um, just to show what a variety of colour we can use in skin so this is um, one I've had for a long time it's an introdu introduction to painting the nude and who's it by? It's by David Carr now immediately on the front cover look at the colour there of that lady um, that's predominantly yellow with the white of the paper coming through and some blues and lilacs for shadows so lilacs another good colour I've used just blue there but actually if we popped a little bit of the same pink in and if you stick to the pink that you're going to be putting in the skin as well to make your lilac for your shadow so just put an extra bit of shadow up here can you see that's just pop that little bit of pink in so it's a bit more lilac-y than blue so by using the same few colours you're going to get a more harmonious picture so use the same pink in your lilac shadow that you use in your skin so going back to this lady look so we've got the lilacs the blues the yellows and the oranges and if we go inside see just how many different colours there are in there again he's used quite a lot of lilac for the shadow there and again quite a bit of yellow in the skin so and look at the surroundings the colours of the what's around us so we've got this blue on the backdrop here this lilac that's going to be reflecting in the skin so it's a bit like when you're painting water and you put the colors of the surroundings into the water because that's what it's reflecting 
that gives you a nice overall painting for it all, you know, to be quite harmonious, to use some of the colours from the background in the skin. The same here, so we've got some of these colours from the back, the reds reflected in her here. Um, and just look how, how vibrant and bright these are. So have a play and be quite bold with your colours. A little bit about anatomy there. There was one I was trying to find. This one, see how, how bright that is, how much yellow there is in there. So coming back to the yellows, try different ones. So we set off with the very earthy natural colours here, but have a go with the others, have a go with the um, cadmiums. So let, let's just do that now. Like I said, while this blue is drying, I mix a tiny touch of the cadmium yellow with plenty of water, which is probably what he's got on the front of here is the, the cadmium, I would think. And adding to that a tiny, tiny bit of cadmium orange. And look how much brighter that one is compared to what we've already got on the paper. So try different yellows and different um, reds, the ones that you've got on your own palette. Another one you could try is Naples yellow. Don't forget that your Naples yellow, I'll just show you again, that's this one. Your Naples yellow is opaque, not transparent, which can be handy at times if you want to cover things up. So I'll just show you it on its own. And then again we'll add a tiny touch of the cadmium orange to it. bit more water. Gosh, that's quite um, quite pink. I've added a little bit too much pink, too much of the orange. We'll try the Naples yellow just with a touch of the paler red that we had before, the permanent alizarin crimson. So you can see all I'm doing is experimenting and playing and this is what you need to do. Get a piece of paper, have a go and make notes. Write down next to them which colours you've used. So that's perhaps a bit more natural looking with the alizarin crimson in the Naples yellow rather than the cadmium orange. But then again if you mix the two together, so if we put some of these on top of each other, you know, to get to add, like, like I say, where your lips are, where things are, are slightly more pink. We can see now where these have dried, you might want to go a little bit darker in places with these. So again, get some of the burnt umber and add to that some blue, some French ultramarine and make a nice thick mix with much less water. So if you look at the consistency of that, that, that's a lot thicker than these with all the, the water in. And then you can use that to get your shadows and go darker. That one. So again, with all of them, another way of getting your shadows in is to make another mix of the same two colours and go on top again. So this is the one we had earlier. You can see if you put that on top, you're going to be able to start and make shadows. Right, so I'm hoping now that this is dry, or dryish. So we'll go back to that first quite loose wash and put it over the top. So you can see, because it's transparent, that shadow is showing through and you've got your shadows already there before you start painting the shapes of your face on top. And over that lilac there. Okay, so because it's transparent, it's coming through and your shadow is there, so you're already starting to build up that figure to make it more 3D. And then of course you can add, add on top again. Now when you're painting in this um, way, I've talked about this before, but it's called painting wet on dry because we let that paint underneath dry and then added another layer. Now the one tip I have for that is imagine that you're painting on glass. 
so don't start scrubbing away with your brush and being really tough with your paper imagine this is a sheet of glass that you don't want to break and paint over it very gently that way you won't lift up the pigment underneath and spoil your drawing under that you've already got there underneath that you've done with your shadow colors and things alternatively you can put your shadow on top so say that's your dry face there that you've already done and then you can come in later and put some shadow on top either with some blues and lilacs or with a darker mix of the same colour or a combination of the two. And as well as adding shadows on top, you might also want to add extra colour. Like I said before, looking at that book, if you've got some light shining or you've got makeup on, anything like that, just come in later on and add that extra colour on top, but do it gently once it's dry. Okay, so I hope that's been enough to get you going. I really think what you ought to do is get a sketchbook, do lots of swatches like this and write next to them which colours you've used so that at a later date you can come back and if you're working from a photograph or, um, or if you've got this person sat in front of the, you that you're painting, put this swatch next to them and look at the colours that are there. So this is very basic, like I said before, there are an awful lot more colours in your skin than we've got there. If you look at the greens and the blues of your veins and things and all these shadows, and of course then we've got to start and think about putting hair on top and things like that as well. But to begin with, just have a play with some of these very natural skin tones, using your earth colours if you can, uh, these down this side, which are much more natural looking than some of the brighter ones. Just adding a touch of blue to some of them to neutralise them a little bit. Okay, so have a go first of all with a yellow and a red and then some of these earthy browns here. Okay, so I ho hope you get on okay with that. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And again, any questions, just pop those in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.